I am very excited about this next story. I'm super fucking excited about this next story, you guys. Uh, it came it came in yesterday late in the day, and I know a couple folks have talked about it already, but I, I wanted to make sure that I, I addressed it because it's a big fucking deal, and I covered this story a whole bunch when, when it was happening. I did a dispatch. I think I talked about it on some live streams, uh, and I've talked a, a, a fuck ton about uh, labor, the labor movement. I've talked a lot about unionization. I've talked a lot about why unions got depowered. Uh, there's tons of videos about that. So if you're unfamiliar with what happened with Amazon earlier this year in Beth Bessemer, Alabama, uh, which is near Birmingham, I believe, uh, the Amazon employees wanted to unionize. So, so they wanted to look at the uh, retail workers and department store union, the RWDSU. Um, and uh, so Amazon's pretty massively anti-union. They're a corporation in America, uh, post Taft Hartley, which means that they don't believe that unions, uh, you know, and 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 they love to throw some bullshit nonsense out there, like, oh, well, the unions get in the way between the uh, the, the, the company and the employees, we want to talk directly with the employees. Really? When? When the fuck have you talked to the employees? Name one fucking person that works in that fa factory floor and name their favorite color. I'll wait. I bet you Jeffy B doesn't even know the name of his entire board of directors. I bet you Jeffy B doesn't know... Uh, if one of the board of directors was out in the middle of the street, he wouldn't be able to recognize them because he doesn't see them as people. He sees them as piles of cash that he can, he can take for himself. So what did Jeff Bezos do? Uh, Jeff Bezos pumped uh, the, uh, and this is, this is pretty par for the course for most corporations in America at this point, uh, pumped them full of anti-union propaganda. Lies about unions, you know, a lot of which is not just provably false. Um, and again, the reason why they're allowed to do that is because of Taft Hartley, which was written by two Republicans and passed by a Democrat president. There was a bipartisan attack on the working class. The reason Dwight D. Eisenhower ran as a Republican and not as a Democrat is because uh, Harry Truman refused to undo that. That's why there was a bipartisan effort to help corporations and and defang unions and dispower the working class who at that point were gaining a lot of rights. They were gaining a lot of power. And the only reason they got that is because of massive general strike actions led by uh, communists, socialists and uh, uh, labor organizers. That's why we got that's 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 why you, you have all the things you enjoy. You like your weekend? Cool. Thank a socialist for that. Like an eight hour workday? Great. Thank a communist for that. You like child labor laws? Thank both co socialists and communists for that. You like the idea of a minimum wage that should go up with the uh, with with the, the you know changing of living costs? Yeah, thank you to socialists and people in the labor movement. Jeff Bezos wants you to work 24-7 for slave wages. He doesn't give a fuck about you seeing your kids. Look at what happened with the Frito-Lay incident. I mean, they still lost. I, I don't think the, the union did a good job negotiating for them at all. They, they still, the corporation won out in the end. They, they still have to work 12-hour shifts. They just can't work 12-hour shifts seven days a week. But you can do six days a week. You got to give them a day off, though. What that? What is that? That's fucking nothing. That goes against everything that unions aren't supposed to side with corporations. So, uh, you know, what happened was uh, the union lost in Bessemer, Alabama, because Jeff Bezos used a bunch of tricks uh, and schemes like a fucking comic book villain to prevent the unionization from happening. He changed traffic lights. He paid the city of Birmingham to change traffic lights so that workers on their way to work don't have time to talk about things in the parking lot. He hired police officers to make sure that after work, people are moving out of the parking lot and nobody stands around to talk about unions. The one that the NLRB, the National Labor Relations Board, is uh, is getting them for 
is having a mailbox where people can put their votes into on the Amazon property, which is not something they're supposed to do. You're supposed to mail it out. The NLRB is supposed to get it and count it. The company should not have anything to do with it. So they swayed the voters. It's like, uh, you know, and, the, and there's a manager watching you vote. So they did voting on site and there's a manager watching you vote. Well, the management probably doesn't want you to unionize considering that they're the ones helping push the anti-union propaganda. You ever have somebody look over your shoulder while you're working? I hate when that shit happens, right? As, as a creative person, when I have somebody looking over my shoulder at something I'm writing or if I'm designing something and they're looking over my shoulder, I hate it. You automatically just forget how to do things when you're being watched like that because you feel like you're being scrutinized. That's the same thing. You don't think that's going to influence people's votes? Not just that. I wonder how many pro-union votes were in that Amazon mailbox that never reached the NLRB. How many people were pro-union but were intimidated by the management staring at them making their votes? The NLRB should have called them out for all of this shit, but they called them out just for that mailbox thing. So now they have to redo it. They didn't, they didn't call out Amazon for being racist towards Chris Smalls. That's what Je Jeff Bezos was racist towards Chris Smalls. Basically said that he was dumb for because he's black. Well, I think one of the board members quit over that. Now, uh, I know I've mentioned this in a couple of videos before. Uh, the R RWDSU uh, is a rather corporate union. Right. And 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 that happens. I'm, I am I say this with a preface. I'm not anti-union. Um, I just think that unions that. What needs to happen is the rank and file should be able to push back against a union if the union makes decisions and collectively bargains on behalf of corporations rather than the working class. Uh, if they're making decisions on behalf of um uh, political parties instead of the working class. At that point, the rank and file should get together and form a, a committee, right? Uh, a lot of people have talked about this, Left Voice, World Socialist website. I don't think that's a bad idea. Uh, I think that's a great idea, especially when you're dealing with a union that has uh, you know, gone in with the list of demands and you got none of them, right? Like, like what happened with Frito-Lay. They didn't get better working conditions. They didn't get better wages. They just got one day off out of the week, which is, wait a minute, that's actually less than what should be granted to you as a working class person in America. That means that the union really didn't do their job. So, so you know, what, 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 what do we do? At that point, when we see news stories like that, uh, and let's say this vote goes through and the NLRB does the right thing. Um, and, and and the union shows up, right? That was another thing that people criticize RWGSU for is where the fuck were you? Why weren't you guys on site? Why weren't you guys canvassing the neighborhood? Why, if, if Amazon isn't, is allowed to do anti-union propaganda during work hours, which means that they these people are off the floor to go watch anti-union propaganda and then have to come back and work twice as hard, which just proves why you fucking need a union, which is which just proves why we need things like the PRO Act, which just proves why we need a general strike because these workers are being taken advantage of and are being constantly exploited. Where was the union to talk about unionization? Fine, you can't talk about unionization in the parking lot because Jeff Bezos has spent millions of dollars changing the traffic lights and hiring Birmingham police uh, to moonlight as uh, uh, hired guns. Okay, what about a bar or something? You get you can't talk to five or six different employees and get a whole bunch of people together at at a at a local bar down the street and talk about that. There's no fucking Panera Bread you can rent out their their little conference center and fucking talk to people about unionization. You can't do a Zoom meeting 
collect some emails, right? It, it start a start a fucking text chain or something. Get a Zoom meeting. You guys could do any of that. I'm I'm a shitty comedian, and I fucking, you know, I'm a shithead comic, doing this shit out of my bedroom. Next to a a, a plant and my bed. And I can figure some of this shit out. Why can't the unions? So again, what what can we do? Well, one, if if you see a, a union kind of making decisions on the behalf of the corporation, okay, uh, I think rank and file safety committees, rank and file committees in, in general are, are a great idea. But we as consumers should push back against a corporation and the union. We should call out the union and say, hey, why didn't you make this decision on behalf of the workers? They're asking for better pay. They're asking for better condition. They're asking for better hours. They're asking to be treated like a human being. And instead, you got them less rights than they're actually granted. What the fuck? And then we should boycott that company. Like PepsiCo should be boycotted. And there's a lot of shit that PepsiCo makes. But guess what, guys? Uh, Trader Joe's and Aldi have their own brand of shit. And they're far better companies than PepsiCo, Frito-Lay, and, and Amazon. You can go there and buy stuff from a better company. I'm not saying they're perfect, right? But look, I don't buy PepsiCo shit, but I can still get chips, still get decent soda, right, that I can enjoy. You can do that too. Don't shop on Amazon. Try to find the actual retailer's website. If, if you, you know, what, what I use Amazon for is I go and look up the product and I go, okay, this is the company that's doing it. And then I go track their website down and I order shit directly off of their website. That's a way you can boycott it. There's stuff on Amazon Prime that I've wanted to watch, but I, I'm, I'm not. You know, uh, nerd shows that everybody's been telling me to watch, like fucking The Boys and Invincible and... Good omens. I'm, I'm a huge fucking Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett fan. I love that book. I fucking love that book. That's one of the books I did I I, I did read all the way through. And it was on a, on a summer break in, in college when I was in India. I fucking got through that book in a week. It's the fastest book I've ever read. Why? Because it's a really good book. And it's on Amazon. And I, and I still haven't fucking watched it. Because fuck Jeff Bezos. And I'm sorry to Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman and David Tennant. And all the wonderful actors that are on that fucking show. But I'm not going to watch it. Because fuck Amazon. Jeff Bezos doesn't need my 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 clicks and my uh, and and my and my fucking money. Why so he can fucking take another ride around the stratosphere in his dick rocket? No thanks. When the unions start backing corporations and political parties, we the people even if we're not in the union, um we need to stand by and stand in solidarity with those workers. And a great and a really easy way of doing that is just boycotting these corporations and saying, no, look, I'll even put it this way. You don't you don't have to cancel your prime subscription. Yeah. You don't have to cancel your prime subscription. Just stop buying shit from Amazon. Find a different way to do it. It takes a little bit of effort, yes, but don't you think it's worth it that your little bit of effort to find a different way to get your shit means that some other that, that a working class person that works in the Amazon warehouse is one step closer to being treated like a goddamn human being? I think it's worth it. The last thing I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to, you know, jump into the comments here. I'm going to reiterate this point because it's really, really fucking important. Unions are meant to collectively bargain and stand in solidarity with the working class. They are supposed to represent the working class, not corporations or political parties. Period. 
Hayden says you can borrow my Good Omens Blu-ray. You you are uh, an incredibly kind person, sir, and I appreciate that. That would be awesome. <laughs> uh you 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 are a delightful human being thank you Aiden. that's that's very kind of you to offer uh holly says chris smalls is making a union of amazon employees i i did hear that i did hear that um i haven't really seen a lot of traction on that story though uh i'm 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 hoping that i can i i that's something that i need to uh need to look into uh and, and then holly points out uh not well done by the retail union, actually, uh, and business unions. Yeah, uh, yeah. the The retail unions are are they they have they have a, a tendency and a pattern to s side with the corporation that they're negotiating with, and they end up, you know, again, it's like the free delay thing. I was really, really fucking disappointed to see that decision. Really, really disappointed. Uh, you know, and. and if if Americans knew that countries in Europe have a, a, a 28 hour work week and uh, that includes like mid afternoon breaks and maternity paternity leave, universal health care, and those countries are not falling apart as America would. In fact, America does a lot of business with those countries. I think they would change their mind on a lot of this stuff. Again, it's the education. People just don't have an education. You, you, you brought Holly brings up labor history. Uh, if you look into labor history, it's very, it's very, very easy to see uh, the the failures in capitalism and why we need to stand with the working class in America. So I'm hoping that I'm hoping that they unionize, man. I really do. I, I'm, I really hope that the vote goes through, and I really hope this time around. Uh, uh, old jeffy b isn't uh allowed to do the bullshit that he does hey thank you guys so much for checking out these videos if you enjoyed them please hit the like button please make sure that you share this out and please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel especially if you're watching this on uh youtube or facebook or something like that please do make sure that you are subscribed because they unsubscribe and unfollow people from my page quite often uh, which is very frustrating, as you can imagine. Uh, and please do make sure that if you enjoy it, share this out, because sharing is a, is a huge way uh, that you can help independent media fight back against the censorship and the suppression that we face on a pretty consistent basis from big tech. Uh, I've got live shows coming up, guys. Live stand-up comedy events are back. They're back. I'm so excited about them. Uh, August 14th, I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the Irma Freeman Center for Imagination. September 17th, I'm at the Art House Projects in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. September 30th, I'm at the Bardstown Lounge in Louisville, Kentucky. October 6th, I'm going to be at the Robin Theater in Lansing, Michigan. October 7th, I'm going to be opening for Ron Placone and Graham Elwood in Cleveland, Ohio. October 8th, I'm going to be at Trixie's in Detroit, Michigan. And I'm adding shows pretty much consistently. Uh, I'm not touring as heavily as I was before. But I am adding um, several cities to this tour date, so please make sure that you stay up to date with what I'm doing uh, and when I'm coming through your town. The best way to do that is to go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, that's where all the details are going to be. That's where all the ticket information is going to be. That's where you'll find out when I'm coming to your city uh, in the near future. I'm booking dates all over the place, so uh, and I'm very, very excited that these live events are coming back. But I'm also going to be doing virtual shows. Uh, they're going to be less frequent, but I will be continuing to do those virtual shows as well. So don't worry. We're going to be doing some virtual shows coming up. Uh, I'm also going to be putting out new Forkful of Noodles content as well. Uh, so don't worry, those those things are not going away uh, just because the, 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 the live touring is is back. Uh, but again, you can go get all that de uh, information right on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H. 
M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. You can check out all my stand-up comedy albums there, past videos. You can make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member, which does get you free tickets to both live and virtual events uh, You know when, when I come through your town. So uh, be sure to check that out. Thank you for your support, and we'll see you next time. Take it easy, everybody.